as many of you know, I'm a graduate of Texas A&M. Uh, <laughs> I'll get to that in the announcements, all right. Uh, at, towards the end of my time at A&M, I worked at Chick-fil-A, and there were these two brothers there uh, who were pretty good at their job. Now, I know we all know that Chick-fil-A is an unbelievably fast system. That line is insane. You'll see 30 cars, and you're like, that's probably about 30 seconds. Okay, there's a lot of reasons why the line is fast, right? Like, you have the, the iPad system, the 17 employees outside, the sliding doors. It goes on and on and on. But the real reason that Chick-fil-A is so fast is every single Chick-fil-A location has these two brothers, okay, who are unbelievable workers and do everything three times as fast as Father Christopher Meyer, okay? And when I was working there, I just started, and the director came up to me and he said, hey, I want you to squeeze lemons today, okay? Okay, basically these two brothers are the only ones who do it, and we got to get somebody else. We're too reliant on them. And he brings me boxes and boxes and boxes of lemons. He says, you have to cut them all in halves. You have to use this machine. You have to squeeze it all into here. And when you're done, let me know. And so I begin. And these two brothers are just looking at me laughing. I mean, they are like amused at everything. They're making fun of how I cut lemons. They're making fun of how I throw the used lemons away. Anything that I was doing was wrong. Uh, and I was convinced, I said, I am going to be fine, guys. I'm going to be fine. Just let me get this done. It can't be that hard. I'm squeezing lemons. Well, at the end of this, I went to the director and said, I'm done. And he said, wow, you took three hours to squeeze lemons. And I went to the brothers and I said, how long does it take you? And they said, one hour. And one of them said, one time I did it in 50 minutes. And I said, oh, man. And so then I said, all right, you guys got to teach me. I'll relearn how to use a knife. I'll relearn whatever it is. Teach me your ways. I got down to an hour and 20 minutes, which I was pretty impressed with. By the end of my time at Chick-fil-A, I still wasn't at that insane speed of those secret brothers that every Chick-fil-A has. But I remember once I realized how amazing they were, if anybody asked me how to do something, I either told them exactly how they did it, or I told them to go ask them how they did it. I was like, the best way to bread the chicken, I promise you those two brothers know. The best way to rotate the freezer, I promise you, those two brothers know. I started imitating them in every single way I could because I knew if I was going to be fast, if I was going to be good, I was going to do it like the, those brothers. For the record, you've never talked to those brothers. They don't let them talk to customers, okay? So today we're in Mark chapter 10. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples, a sizable crowd, we see Bartimaeus, right? This blind man comes. And this is really an incredible story. I say, if you don't pray with scripture, pray with this. I'm going to run through it real quickly and name all these amazing things that you should be able to sit with the Lord who made you and created you and wants to be in discussion with you. And you can just pray with this passion. This is a great place to start, okay? So first of all, we have this blind man saying, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And what happens? The crowds rebuke him for calling out to Jesus. They're like, this savior is for something bigger than you. This savior is for somebody else. Be quiet, shut up. And Jesus contradicts them all, right? He says, call him. And you notice the crowd immediately changes. So they called the blind man saying to him, take courage. Get up. Jesus is calling you. Remember that. Remember that's how the world sees this relationship with God. There will be a day where everyone will say we should have had this intimate relationship with God. And he throws aside his cloak. And Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man replies what? He says, master. Master, I want to see. And Jesus says, go your way. Your faith has saved you. Go your way. And what happens? Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. Okay, Bartimaeus got told, go your way, and said, my way is his way. My way is the way. Back to Chick-fil-A, okay? One day, I'm working at Chick-fil-A, 
and I'm trying to move fryers, and I spill a ton of oil all over my pants, like hot oil, and I'm freaking out. And I look to one of these brothers in total panic, and he looks at me and goes, I don't know, I've never done that before. <laughs> Jesus Christ did not come just to be an incredible healer, okay, an incredible miracle worker, okay? He is here for all of that, and we join him with that. But no matter our highs, no matter our greatest moments of consolation, our greatest moments of joy in Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, we are going to have some low moments. And that is what is so beautiful about Jesus Christ, that his greatest moment was his lowest moment on the cross. His worst moment, his toughest moment, was his best moment. And that is the moment that we can always be united with him. We can always turn to him. And he says, I understand. I know. I'm with you. I was with you. I am with you. I will continue to be with you. Bartimaeus had a choice to make. Okay, imagine for a second, this man who had been blind his entire life could have simply said, Jesus, give me some time. Okay, let me go travel the world. Let me, let me see things. Let me do some things. And Jesus didn't even demand that he follow him. And this man immediately knows the best way is the way of Jesus. And this is the same Jesus. We've been hearing this through Mark, and we're going to continue to hear this. His way is the cross. His way is suffering. His way is not eternal bliss in this life. That's coming in the next life. Okay? This is what our bishops say about stewardship. We're celebrating Stewardship Sunday. Okay? They don't say, wow, serving the Lord, being a disciple, is just eternal bliss and so awesome and just do it and you're going to love it immediately. They actually say this, the way of discipleship is privileged beyond any other. Jesus says, I came so that you might have life and have it more abundantly, but discipleship is not an easy way. If you wish to come after me, Jesus also says, you must deny yourself and take up your cross daily and follow me. For if you wish to save your life, you will lose it but if you lose your life for my sake, you will save it. This is a difficult road to choose. And brothers and sisters, we love ourselves very much. So we do not choose this often. We do not choose this enough. I love St. Augustine's quote, which echoes the witness of Bartimaeus that should inspire us all. St. Augustine says, love God and do whatever you please. For the soul trained in love to God will do nothing to offend the one who is beloved. Guys, love God, and we can do whatever we want. We can pray in adoration. We can serve our neighbor. We can love as God calls us to love. We can reject all the evil in this world. We can run to him who is love, we don't have to remember a bunch of rules because we hear them once and we say, of course, that makes sense. What a better way to love God. We don't have to feel terrible serving. We say, God, you told me this is what I'm made for. I'm going to trust you, okay? Bartimaeus comes to the Lord for healing. And in that moment of healing, I'm sure he was thinking, wow. This is what my eyes were made for. But I promise you, after he follows the Lord into trials, into suffering, into divine will, he was saying, wow, this is what my body and soul was made for. This is what I was created for to be, to be united with Jesus Christ in this love that sometimes looks hard, that sometimes looks difficult, but is 
rewarded with glimpses of heaven in this life in eternal heaven, eternal bliss in the next. So brothers and sisters, let us do our will. Let us follow our way, which is his way, which is the way. Let us run to the will of Father. Let us run to the healer. Let us run to him who knows for who we were made, who knows for why we were made, who knows that we were made for love, who knows that we were made for stewardship, who knows that we were made to be his disciples. Let us run to the will of God.